Hello Blender Artist, welcome to the Hard Surface Beginner's Guide Tutorial Series, a quick disclaimer. This is fully educational content, not an entertainment video. If you truly want to learn Blender professionally, then this video is for you. Before we get into the tutorial, let me give a quick introduction about me. My name is Jack, and I'm going to be the instructor for this tutorial. I'd be working with Blender for two years. To know more about myself, check my Instagram page and my portfolio. Link will be in the description. First, you need to download Blender. Why Blender? Blender is open source and also easy to understand. Open any browser and type Blender. Click this link and you go to the Blender homepage. Now click the download button, you download the latest version. Installation process is not a big deal. Just click next, next, and install. Shall we begin? All right, once you install and open Blender, this is how the interface looks like. Quite confusing, right? But don't cry, let me guide you through Blender. First, to get rid of this pop-up screen, just click somewhere else on the viewport to vanish the splash screen. Cool, before I explain about the UI and basic navigation, let me set up Blender to my preference. Just copy my settings to follow along my tutorial. Click this edit and select preference. Let's start from top, right here, under display, you have an option called resolution scale. Just increase or decrease the value to make the screen bigger or smaller. I would like to go with the value something like 1.18 or 1.19. Hmm. Well, decrease the value a little bit to 1.15. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. You can save now or save at the end. Back to settings. Just toggle off the splash screen. So when every time you open Blender, you don't get that useless pop-up screen. Just turn off that shit. And now let's move on to viewport. Under quality, change the view viewport anti-analyse from eight samples into 16 samples. And also under texture, change anisotropic filtering 2x into eight. For laptop users, you might need to turn on this settings. In input, check emulate numpad box. Same under mouse, turn on three button mouse. Next, select navigation and enable perspective. Let me show what this option does. If I turn off perspective, save the settings. If I press one on my number pad, it's not gives me perfect view. Now go back to settings. This time I'm turn on perspective. Save one more time. Yeah, you can turn off auto save it order to know what you change. Get to the viewport. And now if I press one on my numpad, I got the perfect side view. You can see X and Y axis lines. There is one more settings you need to change to finish Blender setup. Go back to preference, select key map. Here by default, spacebar action is set to play. Change it to search. If it's set to play, the animation timeline started to run. It is commonly used for animations. So we are focusing on hard surface. Instead, play change it to search. Now, if I press the spacebar key, it brings up search menu. You can do a lot of stuff with it. I explained it to you later on this tutorial. Spacebar is the biggest key in keyboard. So just use it. Now that all the settings you need to change in preferences, now let's take a look at the viewport. Why we still having animation timeline at bottom? To remove it, just place your cursor somewhere near to the timeline. I hope you can see the difference when I bring my cursor closer to the timeline. When cursor change, just click the left mouse button and drag it down. Right on top, click the little arrow icon to access viewport shading menu. Here, go to the bottom and enable cavity. This option will help you to see more defined lines in your mesh. To take it a step further, change type to both. Now you have more control over this settings. Just increase the range value to 1.4 to 1.5. That's it. Your viewport looks better than before. Just compare before and after. Now you are capable of becoming a good artist. But just think about this. You don't really need to do this settings every time you're working on a new project. That annoying, right? To fix it, just click the file and default select Save Startup File. Now I close my Blender and open again. Look, we got our previous change set up. We successfully completed the Blender setup. Clap your hands, heh <laughs> heh. Here's where the fun part begins. I need your full attention for this because it's really important. I'm gonna teach you basic navigation and shortcut keys. First of all, to rotate the viewport, hold the middle mouse button and move your mouse. If you are working with trackpad, use you two fingers and swipe left and right to view like a real world object. 
Next to zoom in and out, scroll the mouse wheel and laptop users, just pinch to zoom in. Now combine both rotate and zoom in and out to get familiar with the blender. Next, what we are going to learn is how to select object or anything. Place your cursor to the object you want to select and click the left mouse button to select object. You can see the orange stroke once you select. To select multiple objects, just hold the shift key and select other objects. You might get, you will get the situation to select everything in your scene. In that case, press A key to select everything exists in your viewport. How to delete object or anything in Blender? Well, you can select the object you want to delete, right click and you can see delete at bottom or the shortcut key for this is X. Remember, X key is used to delete. Bro, I unfortunately delete my model. How could I get them back? You may ask, it's simple. I hope you guessed. Yes, control Z to undo and control shift Z to redo. If you have a paper and pen, just note it down. Great, you learned some basic, but boy, you missing one important thing, how to add mesh or objects. Press shift A to open this menu. Here go to mesh and there is many different types of object you can add. Let me pick this money and click enter. This is one of the common way to add different objects. Wait, where is the spacebar key? You can press spacebar to get search tool. From here, just type any kind of mesh. Me typing cube. Just smash the enter key, that is. It another way to add mesh. Interesting, right? Let's spice it up. To move object around the viewport, select the mesh and press G. Remember G meaning to grab. So it move independently, you can also move your 3D cursor, not actually grab and move freely, but you can place in position by pressing shift and right click. Now the 3D cursor move to your cursor position. If you add new mesh, it will be generated to the 3D cursor position. Now a question pop up in your head, how can I move it back to the center? If you can just move manually or press shift S and select cursor to world origin. Job done, same to object. Select the object and press Shift S, but this time click the selected to cursor. Now the object moved to the center position. If forgot to teach one thing, if you want to move an object to one specific axis, by the way, there are three different axes, X, Y, and Z. Let me select the mesh and press G. Now I select the axis. If I press Z, it moves up and down direction. If I press X, it moves left and right and way to moves forward and backward. As same to rotate object, first select your object and press R to rotate. Like I already said, you can rotate the object freely or any specific axis. You can rotate it on by pressing R and select the axis, each axis having different rotation. To scale mesh, you can easily guess the key, it's S. By pressing S key, you can only make the mesh bigger or smaller. But if select any axis, it change the shape. For example, if I press S and X, it scale only on X axis. You can do this on remaining two axis. You can also do all these navigation by using these tools. Right hand side, there is a 3D viewport axis. By rotating the axis, you can rotate the object view. Down, there is a magnification glass icon. By hold it and dragging it, you can zoom in and out. And this little hand icon, it allows you to move the view by holding shift and middle mouse wheel and move the mouse to do the same movement. On the left hand side, you have a lot of tools. These tools are used to move, scale and rotate the objects. I personally use shortcut key than using these tool. To find your object, you can done this here in editor type, which shows all the collection and objects in your scene. Even when you duplicate an object, it will be added in this editor. First, to duplicate an object, select that object and press Shift D. It will be duplicated and also to duplicate multiple mesh by selecting multiple object and press Shift D. To move the mesh to your custom collection, select the mesh you want to move and press M. Now you have this collection menu, type the name you wanted to name to the collection. Now enter, this will put the mesh into different collection. Level 1 completed. Now you learn the navigation and shortcut keys in Blender. Part one is over. In the next part, I'll teach you about modeling. Here's where your skills started to upgrade to next level. See you next week with amazing tutorial. Have a great day.